importance of early intervention is acknowledged by professionals and non-professionals alike. It advocates promotion of positive assets and development of the child and the family. Hence, the effort is to provide comprehensive services to respond to the needs of the children and their families. The major purpose of early intervention is prevention of disability developmental delays. Early intervention is both primary and secondary prevention. Prevention could be at primary level when we seek to prevent the occurrence or development of the condition or it could be secondary prevention wherein we aim at reducing the impact and magnitude of disability or delay development. Since the child's development is dependent on endowment and its interaction with the environment, it is imperative to focus on the child and the environment in early intervention. Designed to be cost effective and independent functioning of the child, intervention may focus on the child and the parents. The ultimate goal in intervention is to enhance normal development in family or community. Since genetic characteristics are predetermined and fixed, it's only the environment that can help the child. After birth, the child is nurtured and cared for by the parents and the immediate family bring out the best with regard to development and learning environments of their dwelling. Therefore, intervention programs are either focused or psychosocial in nature where the focus is family and environment. Best outcome, however, is expected when both of them are implemented and it is coordinated. Combined and early intervention is defined as the introduction of planned programming, deliberately timed and arranged in order to alter the anticipated or projected course of development. The rationale for early intervention programs, 0 to 3 years. Several studies conducted overseas and in India between 1939 and 1968 and those in the recent decades between 1986 and 1998 have shown the importance of early intervention and its effects on the developing child. The French psychologist Robert Laffont statement, if you are slow, you simply have to start earlier, is relevant to early intervention programs. Importance of Early Identification Studies Conducted in India The Madras Project, the first in India, conducted by Jay Chandran, 1968, concluded, It is feasible to train mothers in daycare centres. The longer the training, the more positive and lasting will be the effect on the children. The trained mother gains a caring position as a carryover agent. Greater the parental participation, faster is the impact on the child. Positive attitudinal changes in parents while understanding the importance of early intervention may be seen within six months of commencement of training. Jaya Krishnaswamy of Maduram Narayan Centre for Exceptional Children observes, Earlier the intervention, better are the results. It limits disabilities. It helps in mainstreaming and in appropriate placement in special schools. Fosters the emergence of parents' networks and provision of special schools in the community. Individualized family services program can be effective. An initial total involvement from birth to two years with gradual weaning 
helps the parents become effective carryover agents at home. Early Childhood Care and Education ECCE Early Brain Development At birth, a baby has about 100 trillion brain cells which must be organized into networks that require trillions of connections and synapses between them. Stimulation given to the fetus as well as to the newborn baby speeds up myelination and networking in the brain. National Policy on Education, 1964 The National Policy on Education, 1964, has given much importance to early childhood care and education, viewing ECCE as a crucial input in the strategy of human resource development. It is a feeder and support program for primary education and a support service for working women of the disadvantaged sections of the society. Emphasis has been given to establishing linkages between the integrated child development services and other ECCE programs. The scheme of assistance to voluntary organizations for conducting ECCE centers. Activities of the Balwadis and daycare centers run by voluntary agencies with government assistance. The pre-primary schools or Anganwadis and the maternal and child health services through public health centers or sub-centers. ECCE, a total development. The ECCE involves the total development, physical, motor, cognitive, language, emotional, social and moral of the child from conception to about 6 years. The development process during this period includes mother's care during pregnancy, antenatal health checkup, nutritional care of mother during lactation, nutritional support and control of anemia, hygienic and skilled birth delivery, correct infant feeding practices, immunization of infant from communicable diseases, mother's education in child care, early childhood stimulation, health and nutritional support throughout. Since it has a complex integral function, Workers with ECCE training are required in integrated work sites or ECCE centers where the essential service flow to the young children through the period of their growth and preparation for formal education takes place. To tap the full advantage of well-integrated ECCE activities and associated programs, efforts are being directed at coordinating the functioning of various agencies which are striving to meet different needs of young children. The Department of Women and Child Development, which works in collaboration with the Labor, Education, Rural Development Departments, is the nodal agency for ECCE programs. Community as well as parental participation is enlisted wherever possible in resource mobilization, planning and implementation. Adequate representation of mothers is organized. The role of capable voluntary agencies is emphasized to create a wide and rich network of resources of ECCE. Ongoing programs or schemes such as ICDS, ECCE centers, Balwadis run by voluntary agencies, pre-primary schools and daycare centers that reflect a concern for the holistic development of young children are being improved. Early intervention for children with mental retardation. Of all the disabilities, mental retardation is the one neglected the most. Those with mental retardation and in the age group 6 years and under constitute a significant percentage of children which is substantial in view of the large population in the country. Awareness among the public in India about the need to provide services to infants and children with mental retardation has come only in the last decade. 
With this awareness at present, service centers are available, some providing exceptionally good services. But there are only 198 centers offering early intervention programs for the entire country, leaving the demand largely unmet. There is a need for a comprehensive early intervention program. Let us look at this now. A child with developmental delays needs an individualized program taking into account the family needs, preferences and supports. Family priorities are best satisfied with every member of the intervention team, the special educator, the parent or caregiver and the members of the interdisciplinary team of experts knowing what the priorities are and working in coordination and collaboration. Early intervention is not just programming on detection of delay or disability, but it lies in the prevention of developmental delays, primary, secondary and tertiary prevention. Primary prevention calls for systemic and societal changes in nurturing children during their development, elimination of specific conditions that lead to a later disability, counselling and guidance services to adolescents and adults in planning for parenthood and increasing availability of parental care. Secondary prevention seeks assessment of the magnitude of the disability or delay, reducing or eliminating its future impact on both the individual and the society. In tertiary prevention, the effects can be lessened and the development of the individual fostered. What are the challenges of early intervention? Infant tests are not highly predictive of later functioning, though they indicate a trend. Individual variations in the influence of environmental conditions and early intervention on the long-term effect of illness and other disabling conditions. Difficulties in the assessment of disability in infants and toddlers. Absence of data on the number of children with special needs and register of services. Parental child development, emotional support, respite, care, parent organizations and social services. How well the child has adapted himself or herself in performing his or her daily living activities and how he or she has been helped to be included in normal settings by the other members of the community with cultural pluralism speak for the success of an early intervention program. Need for social audit on program implementation services. In addition to all the challenges cited earlier, the absence of a clear-cut social audit on program implementation that directly benefits the child receiving the services has been felt in the country. Several services are available each with a different type of program. What are those programs? They are programs that are highly structured and offer intensive individualized teaching directed at specific goals for each child that enhances development by counteracting delay or impairment that are catch-all ranging from group play, movements, music, dance, art and any other activity that are opening in a vacuum with no certainty that the children in need are actually benefiting. A social audit will give certainty and directions to the service providers, enabling them to meet the needs of the child with disability. Of late, there has been a move in this direction by the government of India. India has a vast resource in human potential and numbers. Many of the challenges can be met by involving this rich resource. Family involvement and community participation, a basis for developing intervention and providing services. In a family-oriented approach, every member of a family is actively involved in the management of a child with disability and towards this goal, Effort or prayas and practice, sadhana. The family members are educated, directed, facilitated 
and empowered by the professionals who cooperate with them in providing services. Families and professionals are then collaborators in the human enterprise, the provision of services to persons with disabilities. Now, let's look at some of the early intervention programs. Maturam Narayan Center for Exceptional Children, Chennai Training Center, which was established in 1989, is based on the Upanayan, Early Intervention Program, developed indigenously by Inkem Research and Development Laboratory to fulfill the need for a structured program culturally appropriate, suitable to the Indian socio-economic needs. The program is the first systematic one developed in the country which has since been translated and is in use in many centres in the country. The centre is the first of its kind in the country providing services to over 4,000 children at present. Accompanied by their mothers, about 150 children attend the center every day. Parental involvement is the foundation of the program at the center where the children are trained by their mothers or close relations in a few cases, turned into carryover agents by the special educators. Parents practice yoga and pranic healing regularly with their children. National Institute for Mentally Handicapped in Sikandrabad. The Department of Special Education and Medical Rehabilitation Division under the NIMH takes up early intervention programs for children with mental retardation, infants and toddlers suspected or at risk of delayed development in the age group of 0 to 3 years are given early intervention services once a week by a multidisciplinary team of experts. The parents are given guidance regarding immunization, nutrition, feeding, motor development, speech and language development and psychosocial interventions. A set of brochures has been developed as a part of the Indo-US project on early intervention for intrauterine growth retardation of children at risk of developmental delays. A book in simple language and illustrations for children with special needs has been developed by Narayan. It is very useful to parents and teachers in readying children with mental retardation for regular schools. Also used by the DPEP scheme of the Government of India, the activities cover conversation and creative activities for different levels of retardation. NIMH has also brought out video films on step by step we learn, give them a chance, Sahanubhuti nahi, Sahyog, for awareness building from the point of view of early intervention services, schooling and vocational training. The films bring a spirit of optimism. Thakur Hariprasad Institute for Research and Rehabilitation of the Mentally Handicapped in Hyderabad. The THPI in Hyderabad undertakes early interventions and early stimulations involving parents. It has adopted the Portage program and Head Start program of the West with the feeling that most of the early stimulations programs, especially Portage, relies heavily on home-based training. But experience has shown that at that time it becomes difficult for a poor illiterate mother in poverty stricken nuclear family to carry home based training and stimulation programs as both parents have to struggle for their survival all day long with very little time or energy to attempt home based training. There is a need therefore for a peripatetic trainer and or a neighborhood center for daycare needs to be looked into realistically. There is a further need to have separate personnel at grassroots level to attend to early stimulation programs for persons with mental retardation for sustainable intervention.
other institutions that could also be directed for effective interventions are the public health center based or hospital based program district rehabilitation center rehabilitation programs early intervention with infants at risk andhra pradesh association for the welfare of the mentally retarded parents self help groups national institute for the mentally retarded institution based extension services action aid community based program worked in rural areas deepshika ranchi through its outdoor services and extension clinics at kanke and hulhundu are working in the field of early intervention and child care and training vijay human services in chennai has developed a 24 hour timetable for every child which is being implemented as individualized program plan at the center and as individualized family services program at home mano vikas kendra rehabilitation and research institute for the handicapped kolkata working since 1974 it has created public awareness on children with mental retardation their needs and capabilities among pediatricians neurologists psychiatrists and doctors in addition to the special educators services are provided for families and their children with disabilities from birth to 6 years services are provided for 9 infants in the daily sessions and for 10 children in weekly sessions the children undergo an early assessment followed immediately after by individual learning plan emphasis is laid on training in the development areas of cognitive social language motor and self help skills care and counseling is given to reduce the emotional stress which parents undergo swikar rehabilitation institute for the handicapped in sikandrabad has a comprehensive and pervasive early child care and intervention unit assisted by the multidisciplinary team the center follows an individualized early intervention program a few other well equipped centers with teaching learning materials aids and appliances have been established by swikar at several places in the state of andhra pradesh the center at sikandrabad with its well provided infrastructure offers programs for over 400 children for early intervention in a day there is a need for assessing the effectiveness of these intervention programs which brings us to assessment tools community based assessment tools are required to compare the effects of the given training program this will help in assessing individually the status of adaptive skills acquired by the person with functional deficits resulting from mental retardation indigenous community based assessment tools have been developed for a wide range of age groups severity and level of mental retardation efforts have also been initiated to address assessment of educational needs across special schools resource rooms in regular schools home based and community based settings in the current scenario existing tools can meet assessment needs a brief description of indian based assessment tools using community based assessment approach will enable selection of a suitable tool for any age level severity and level of mental retardation for planning educational programs the madras developmental programming system this is the oldest assessment tool in india for use in special education for persons with mental retardation the madras developmental programming system was developed in 1967 by professor jay chandran in balavihar chennai he effectively adapted the minnesota development programming system to indian cultural and functional context 
This tool covers assessment needs of persons with mental retardation of all age groups and severity levels. It contains checklists of functional statements covering 20 domains. Each domain listing 18 items arranged hierarchically from early years competency to adult stages of functioning. The domains cover functional adaptive behaviors suitable in Indian culture and conditions. This tool is applicable to all age groups ranging from early intervention, special school, home-based and community-based settings. This also has an assessment matrix which uses color and symbol code to record level of achievement. Color blue denotes formative stages of achievement and color red denotes independent levels of achievement. Striped codes refer to time covered for training, referring to term levels first to third quarter of academic term. Demographic profile of child is stated in the above mentioned matrix for the purpose of tracking and general background of the indexed child. This tool has a manual that provides instructional guidelines to administer it. It is widely used across the country by special educators and is approved by RCI for training special educators in working with persons with mental retardation. So now in conclusion, we can state that well-developed early intervention programs are available in our country. Some service models with a CBR approach have been introduced to disseminate information on early intervention programs through village level workers. This effort has also helped in narrowing the lapse of time between detection and intervention. Indigenously developed homebound intervention programs for young children with visiting trainees are in use in local village or urban preschools. A comprehensive early childhood care and education includes the following services in centers for effective functioning. Family counseling, health, nursing, nutrition care, occupational, physical therapy, psychological, audiological, speech, language services, special education, social work, transportation. All these services can be used in planning the intervention program for people with mental retardation. Mm -hmm.